Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Rise of the Phoenix and in this video we are going to be talking about how movement works in Lord of the Rings Rise to War. We'll go over some movement basics, long marches, little PvP tips and tricks, and then how forts and fortresses impact army movement in this game. So let's jump right into it. The most basic application of movement in this game is you must always have an adjacent tile in order to move to a target tile. For example, if I want to move to this one power tile, there must be an adjacent tile. I'm sure most or everybody knows that. However, I've seen some people that don't realize that adjacency counts your own tiles fellowship tiles, and faction tiles. So you don't always need to have your own tile adjacent to where you want to move as long as anybody within your faction or your fellowship or you have an adjacent tile, it will be considered a legal movement. Now, how do you get from one place to another if it's super, super far away? So if I wanted to move from this area, I just moved my base here today, all the way back over to, let's say, Nan Loon, because I want to go farm some tiles or whatever, there is a feature in the game called Long Marching. It You have to have an adjacent tile in order to long march, so it follows all of the rules that we just talked about. And the way you do it is very, very simple. Click your target tile, click March. It's going to say out of range. You can pick whichever commander you want to send. Uh, one little tip is if you have a commander that can carry some eagles, eagles are super fast and it will greatly reduce the amount of time you'll spend marching. Uh, and then you just click this button here. It does take 10 ability points from your ring to use it. So I can't do it right now because I've been using my ability points to mock battle. It does cost 10 of those. I believe it's available at ring level 15. So you get it pretty early on into the game. Uh, I wish I could see how long it would take Faramir to get over here. Probably something like four or five hours with his current army. Um, but yeah, you can always click this little question mark too in case you want to remember how exactly Long March works. The one restriction is that it has to be within faction land. So the land, your, your target tile, has to be owned by your faction in the sense that your faction controls that entire territory. So in that sense, I could move to any of these zones since my faction controls them. It does ignore the normal movement restrictions on forts, fortresses, and your town. So it lets you get really far, potentially really quickly if you have a fast enough army, and you don't necessarily have to chain forts all the way to where you're trying to go. So let's talk about a few PvP tips and tricks. The number one mistake I see a lot of people, even in my own fellowship, doing is let's say they want to attack this tile here. Let's just pretend like my town's not there. This is empty, barren land. Somebody wants to march an army onto this 130 tile. It's only connected by two tiles right here. So if they start an army that's like 10 minutes away, if they start marching that army in and the enemy takes these two tiles, when that army lands on this 130, it's going to auto bounce because it is considered an invalid move in the game's logic. There are no more adjacent tiles, even though there were when you started to send that army. What matters is when the army arrives. If there's no adjacent tiles, it's going to auto bounce, no combat happens, you've wasted your stamina, and you have to walk all the way back home before you, before you can send them again. I've seen people sending two, three commanders at one tile that's somewhat isolated, and the enemy just plops one little army over here, one little army over here, and all of a sudden they've wasted 20, 30, 40 minutes of their time and all of that commander stamina. So as far as PvP goes, really keep an eye out for situations where you can bounce your enemies by removing their adjacent tiles. And keep it in mind for yourself is it's often better to move to say here and then move over here because 
you have all of these tiles that are adjacent in this example, this random example I'm making up right now, uh, it's going to be really hard for the enemy to take nine to ten tiles. It also gives your friends some time to react as well and help protect the tile that your army is going to land on. And now we can move into forts and fortresses. Hopefully my little example of PVP tips and tricks made sense. I think it's relatively well known, uh, just in case people don't know it, now you know. So we'll go with fortresses first. Fortresses are very, very important as far as moving large amounts of your fellowship members around quickly. You have to take a 200 tile in order to drop a fortress. Uh, it has to be a two by two tile, so 200, 230, 260, etc. You can then drop the fortress. The fortress can only be dropped by a fellowship leader or officer, but what it allows the entire fellowship to do is every member gets one unique slot for an army. So you can see over here, let's see if I can drag this without deselecting it. Dang it, of course, it's gonna deselect. Uh, I'm not sure on the emulator how to try get left and right without clicking, but maybe you guys can see over here. I can send one army to this fortress from anywhere on the map. So even if I, in my previous example, even if I was all the way over in Manloon, I would be able to send one army here, and then that army gets to use this fortress's movement range as its own. It's super awesome because all of your fellowship members can march an army in and then they can drop their own forts to bring extra armies in if they want, or they can just move forward, drop a fort, bring armies in that way. And finally, we will wrap this up by talking about forts. So forts are pretty much exactly like fortresses, except they only apply to the player that builds them. Um, to build a fort, you just select the tile you want to build it on, probably don't want to pick uh, any super valuable tiles. And unlike a fortress, the fort has to be on a one by one. Fortress has to be on a two by two. Oh, this actually brings up a really good thing I forgot. You can only drop fortresses in neutral areas and areas that are controlled by your faction. If it's controlled by an enemy faction, you cannot drop it. So you pick a one by one tile. I don't even know if I have any one by one tiles that don't have forts on them already. I suppose I could have gone and captured one. Oh, actually, Faramir, you're on one. So yeah, you pick your tile, you pick build, select fort. It's gonna take you two hours. The initial construction of a fort cannot be sped up. One thing that's also important to take into consideration is the fort's name is permanent once you click this build button. So you probably want to name it something that relates to where that fort is, or else you're going to end up with a bunch of forts with numbers, and sometimes those numbers will be the same, and then you're not going to know which fort is what, and it's going to confuse you. You're always going to have to open the map to get to your forts, which can be annoying. So yeah, two hours to build after you start it. It does cost gold. Keep that in mind. You don't want to just be plopping these things down willy-nilly because it's reasonably expensive. I think actually... It's 12,000 normally. I think it's a little bit cheaper because I'm Arnor. Uh, once the fort is constructed, it lets you move two armies into that fort regardless of where they are on the map. So you could be 10,000 tiles away. You're still able to move two armies into that fortress and then use that fort's movement range. One mistake I've seen people making is they build a fort and then they think they can just willy-nilly use the movement range from that fort. But as an example, you can see here, some of my armies are in range. That's because these four armies are spread out between two forts in this area. The rest of my armies are actually out of range. So they cannot move to this tile unless I move them into the fort. So always remember the army has to be assigned to a fort. Once it's finished uh, construction, you're allowed to upgrade it to various levels this upgrade time can be boosted. So the initial two hour construction cannot be boosted. The upgrade time can be boosted. The main reason you'll want to upgrade these is so that you can support more armies. Forts are relatively not durable in my experience for the most part. Um, I mean, you can kind of stall for some time by having a whole bunch of forts in an area just because then they have to siege it down. But even at a level two fort, 190,000 durability, 
that's one to two hits from a siege focused army so they are actually somewhat easy to tear down all right i think that's it for this one guys i hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something useful if you did like the video please consider liking subscribing and commenting down below and i'll see you in the next one rise of the phoenix over and out